Wow. Is this an amazing fixed blade or what? You guys tell me down in the comments. This is a one-off, which most of the Papa Bear knives are one-off knives, okay? So he can make some utilitarian style knives and looks and nothing super fancy. This is just a total user beater type of knife, if you will. Even though it's done really well, the finishing is very pretty and nice and all that. But this is made really for use and has a nice leather sheath. Alan gets a little fancy sometimes also and puts some Baker Forge Damascus to work and with some copper inlay here and some copper in these resin handle scales, just a beautiful knife. Again, in a very nice leather sheath. As nice as this one is, and these last two I own, thank you to Mike from Australia, gifted those to me. As beautiful as that last one is, this one here in its kind of undercover, plain looking sheath, which is made by a different company. He's, Alan is working through some sheath manufacturers. Um, when you're a small custom shop, and you're ordering 10, 15, maybe 20 sheets at a time, it's tough because when you call them next time to make another 10, they may be busy. They may, it's tough. Small orders like that are just tough. So this is made by a different manufacturer, a different custom leather worker than the other two. That's why it looks a little bit less ornate, if you will, than this one. This one has some like scalloping on the sides and engravings and, you know, whatnot. And this one's a little bit more plain, but, but do not judge the knife by its sheath. Because when you grab this and you pull this sucker out, you get something that is unbelievable. All I can do is zoom in. And we can talk about this Baker Forged Integral Twist Damascus with Copper Mascus Bolsters. And the amazing thing about this to me is this is an integrated bolster, an integral, if you will, an integral, if you will. The world may never know how to really pronounce that. This is from the tip all the way through, through the bolster, down the tang to the butt end of the knife is one single piece of steel. Yeah, it's amazing. They have fused this copper mascus onto and into the twist Damascus of the tank, like of, of the main body. This is all one piece that Alan bought in like a bar stock, you know, whatever. And then he machined it down, ground it down, did his magic to bring this together. The beauty really is in this, you know, couple of inches right here. I can't get over it. There's obviously no seam here to feel. There's no seam here because it's one solid chunk of material that looks amazing. It's just stunning. And I'm sure my camera is not even doing it justice, really. And then he's cut it down here and he's matched these European stag scales onto them. So you get some um, texture 
It's got, they're probably copper pins, I'm guessing. Keeping in the theme of the copper. But just beautiful. Look at that. Now you'll notice that it's not really symmetrical down the side. There's a little bit of a, of a bow in it. A little curve, if you will. That's what happens when you use natural material like this. You work with what you have. And I think it works. It just works really good in the hand. Now, I know Mike down in Australia, he does, he's not going to use any of his fixed blades. And I'm sending a bunch. <laughs> I've sent a bunch. There's a few others in the box that are going to be sent to him that I've already filmed. You can go back and look. Hell, at this point, I should probably make a playlist. Mike in Australia and Alex from Southern California because they are two of my main supporters. And Gary, like those are like the top three. But anyway, that's a different story. So anyway, overall, this thing is nine and seven eighths. I don't know where to measure the blade exactly, but kind of to the end of this copper mask is to the tip. It's about 4.9 inches. You got about 4.6 inches of cutting edge, 0 0.032 behind the edge. The blade is relatively thin for a fixed blade, 0 0.091. I have folding knives. Um, probably, hell, this, this Kubi right here is probably thicker blade stock than this, yes, so this is a relatively thin fixed blade, for sure. Like, no doubt. Weighs in at 10.8 ounces for the knife alone, or 14 ounces even as a package. The handle thickness at its widest, right back here at the butt end, is about 0.94 it kind of, you know, lives in that 0.8 to 0.94 range. I actually kind of like this little curve in the scale. Because when it goes in your hand, that little S curve, if you will, that's ever so slight, as it fits in your hand, it just, it feels very natural. Like it should be like that. If we look at this other one here, it's not uncomfortable to hold at all. It's super comfortable in the hand and I feel very locked in. This just feels a slight bit more natural. It's hard to explain, but your fingers are kind of flat. Your palm is kind of, has kind of a pocket in it when you grip. So it just seems like that's how it should be made. I don't know. It's weird. I think this is an awesome knife. I'm super excited for Mike to get this because I want to hear Mike's opinion on this one because it is so very cool and just very different. It is very sharp. I know Mike isn't going to use it. Now, the one thing about this knife is a negative for me personally. And again, that's all I can talk about on my channel is, yeah, once we get the specs out of the way, or sometimes I leave those to the end, it's really just my opinion. As all of the other knife reviewers should be, we're just giving you our opinion. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to tell you, hey, go buy this. I mean, I do. When I really, really love something or whatnot, I do say, hey, guys, this, this might be something to check out. But there's also always kind of a negative or a, uh, a drawback. And a lot of times those are just personal nitpicks to me. This has so much copper in it. I have that copper smell going on. And for me, I can kind of... <sighs> I can kind of taste the copper, if that makes sense. I'm not even touching it. Like, I'm just, I don't know. The smell kind of equates into a little bit of a taste for me. Um, I think you guys know what I mean. The same thing happens to me with antifreeze coolant in the car. 
That's one of my least favorite systems to work on in the car because of that coolant smell and quote unquote taste that I get from that. Whereas this one also has copper in it, it does not give me that same sensation because I didn't mean to zoom out that far. Um, because it's just not concentrated enough, I guess. I, I don't know. That's just something to be aware of when you're getting into hardcore copper knives with a lot of copper in them. It's just the way it goes. That's part of the game. Now, you'll notice here, I had somebody comment before, this is a true Damascus pattern all the way through. And you'll see here that it, it looks different here than here because Alan chooses to not etch it here and to polish this out so it looks like a mono steel. It's the same right here as it is here. It's just the way he's finished the material. The same will be true down here. So you can have Damascus that looks like a mono steel. It's just in the finishing and the etching and the polishing. I love it right in here. In that little finger choil, you can see the pattern. I mean, it, it's just beautiful. Now, granted, Papa Bear Knives didn't make the steel. But Papa Bear Knives finished the steel. Ground it. Sanded it. Polished it etched it, put in all of his love, his passion for the craft into this beautiful, beautiful knife. As so we just kind of give a little bit of a, another close up here. I think it's gorgeous. I think Alan did a fantastic job and I'm honored to be entrusted with this to show you guys just what you can do with some creativity, some exceptional materials, and some love and passion for your craft. Please go check out the Papa Bear playlist over here. I would greatly appreciate it. You can't go wrong. He has Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. So check him out. Alan has been a great dude. We will have him on the EDC hour at some point in the new year. We just have to coordinate scheduling and whatnot. And uh, thank you very, very much, Mike, for sending this in, Alan, for shipping it to me, and everybody else for watching. Have a great day.